Good morning, friends and families, brothers and sisters on YouTube World. It says that we are live now. We have the pleasure this morning of interviewing uh, Andre Matiano. Uh, he's a, a Soviet. He was a Soviet uh, officer for the Soviet Naval, and uh, now he's here. And he's also written several books. And all the information that you need for his uh, his books or his his YouTube page, Smoothie Twelve or anything will be on the description box. So now I'm going to start with my questions. First, I, I just want to go ahead and, and do the obvious questions, which, you know, I was listening to his his uh, video his he did this yesterday, uh, Old Canada, and um, I'd have some questions on that. The first one is, um, who are more brainwashed, in your opinion? Is it the Canadians or the Americans? Um. I would say, well, difficult to say. Uh, I would say probably I would lean more towards Canadians because America is much larger. So the sample size itself should be, you know, much larger. So, but um, people say that uh, majority of Canadians never voted for the guy in this parliamentary system, which actually, which is true to a certain degree. But I mean, you have to look at the uh, generally what is happening right now in Canada. It's uh, much worse, worse than it is in the United States. Granted, all U.S. cancel culture and wokeism and all that, you know. But Canada is just taking the price here. Now they, you know, you have this. Right. Well, um, this morning also I was also reading that Justin Trudeau does not want to apologize. You know, the speaker, the speaker apologized, but Justin Trudeau said, or he he's not, he's just avoiding the the he doesn't want to apologize, it seems like. Um, uh, Justin, yeah, Justin Trudeau is a coward. I mean, in yes. the human sense, uh, he is absolute coward. He is drama teacher, okay. Uh, so who suddenly gets to uh, lead so to speak the country with significant population and significant economy <laughs> and there, there you go he was hiding behind uh, you know in some bunker from the truckers from what i heard that tells you everything you need to know about he's a he's a wussy and he is narcissist and he's psychopath so he will be you know just uh misdirecting the blame for everything on somebody else so that's that's pretty much it uh, it's interesting how a lot of these uh, presidents or, or uh, heads of states are turning out to be uh, former or ex-actors or, or yeah. comedians. Yeah. Um, my next question is, uh, you read an article in your in your interview or, or in your video, uh, O Canada, you read an article, you're reading an article from the Regional Medical Center in uh, Germany, uh, Germany, I believe. That's um, true, yeah. Yes. And uh, it said that most, mostly the American soldiers are the ones that were wounded in combat. Do you think that they were either mercen, they were dressed as mercenaries, or they were mercenaries, or under the uh, dressing under the Ukrainian uh, uh, uniform? No, they most likely have been uh, uh, armed forces of Ukraine uniformed. And unless, of course, they are some kind of completely, you know, free shooter, so to speak, they can, you know, basically wear whatever they want. But the point is, it doesn't matter how they dressed, because it's even kindergarten kids <laughs> understand basically that what you have, you have cadre servicemen, you know, uh, being formally retired, you know, just for the sake of, uh, uh, how to put it politely, for the legend. And they go there, you know, they are country people. The same what, what happened there, uh, obviously, the issue of uh, uh, Bundeswehr people, you know, Bundeswehr tank crew. I mean, hey, Russians have their own intelligence capabilities, and they're pretty damn impressive, okay? So <laughs> well, there you go. Um, you said also in your video that Ukraine war, that the Ukrainian war is destroying the EU in which way do you think that it's destroying the EU mostly? Oh, it's going to break up. It's already in the process of the breakup. And this is funny that in this particular respect, you will find United States and Russia in the same boat in the sense that once the EU, EU breaks up, which it, it is, uh, uh, 
again, you have to remember the first what is called the uh, Angela Merkel called them the lower tier or lower gear, you know, uh, countries of the Eastern uh, Europe. Obviously, uh, the, the, we're talking about Poland, Slovakia, we're talking about Hungary and things of this nature. But I mean, they are also primarily more uh, conservative in their outlook, or let's put it this way, more normal. As much as I say, you know, for example, that Polish political elite are absolutely not jobs. Uh, for the most part, the Polish population still maintains, you know, just normal human values, you know. So, and uh, this completely doesn't fit with the cultural outlook of, for example, Western Europe, which for all intents and purposes, I never hit my, not sentiment, I mean, it's done. The Europe, as we know, for example, some of the countries we will not recognize even in the next 10 years. Like France, they, I think so, and not only my idea, they, for example, openly lie about the ethnic and racial compon uh, complexion of France, we're looking at the immigration and non-native white population of uh, France, probably, which is about one third, not 10 percent. And the same is happening with the United Kingdom. So we will not even recognize they will not be, have the outlook of the European countries, except for the architecture. OK. Um, here's, uh, this is a, a very long question. so. One of the leopard tanks that Germany sent to Ukraine earlier this year was recently destroyed in Ukraine by the Russians. Germany, Germany's Brigadier General Christian Fruding has said that German, Germany is committed to helping Ukraine regain, regain all the annexed territories it lost to Russia. The Russians, the Russians report, reported learning from a tank survival they picked up. The entire the entire crew of the tank was made up of Budinsware service men from a German military company. They were not mercenaries. They were Germans in German tanks in Ukraine fighting against Russia. Aside from this being a NATO nation actively partici participating in the conflict in Ukraine, it is an example of why Russia rejects Ukraine's accession into NATO and a reminder of one of Russian's sore spots. Operation Bar Barbosa that took place during World War II when the Soviet Union was invaded by Nazi Germany. Ukraine Stefan Bandera, who led the mass killing of 2.7 to 3 million Polish Jews and 1.8 to 2.77 million ethnic Poles in German occupied Soviet plant Poland is heralded by current Ukrainian regiment. In the early 1940s, Bandera mobilized Ukrainian nationalists in German occupied Germ uh, Ukraine to collaborate with Nazi Germany in the Operation Barbosa invasion in which Russia lost 27 million of its people. Would you comment on the significance of all of this? It was a long question. <laughs> well, first, <clears throat> unlike media, <clears throat> I'm not particularly surprised or <clears throat> in any way startled, honestly, by the fact that they had the <clears throat> cadre, that means regular service people from NATO countries. It's uh, like, it's Polichinello's secret, basically. It's in the open. United States fights there. They have a bunch of the advisors, the United Kingdom. They have the SAS uh, units there. And so it's just, you know, another thing. Uh, obviously, it's important in a sense, not that the fact that they were Bundeswehr uh, people, uh, although already Bundeswehr in Germany, which doesn't have normal press or media anymore, try to say that, oh, no, they were not. Well, they can go to find nearest kindergarten anyway in Germany and try to prove it to them. But obviously not uh, for the Russians who have, again, as already stated, the intelligence and recon uh, 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 capabilities which Germany can only dream about. But <clears throat> the point is that uh, it's the fact that Russia first openly reported about it. That's what matters. Not the fact that obviously that periodically they get the bodies of American mercenaries and again, uh, 
how many of them real mercenaries very few actually anymore it used to be there this enthusiastic crowd that they thought that was would be afghanistan type hunting of the afghan uh <clears throat> wedding parties but that's the only uh, reason so to speak that it makes any kind of the note or inflection point it's the fact that russia obviously changed the tone in this particular respect because before that russians were trying to kind of do the hush hush and i'm pretty sure there have been some exchanges behind the scene so now it's in the open now they will be paraded if need be and so what what can i say i mean they wanted it they got it so that there, there you go as per <clears throat> bandera and well uh, he was had the official ss rank so I don't remember he was Gav Sturmfuhrer or whatever the uh, heck was the his rank, but he was a, a cadre SS officer, as were many of those officers, and you know, and obviously people from the division SS the weapon SS division Galicia. So yeah, I mean, what's the news? I mean, again, this been around for a long time, and everybody knows about anybody who has the you know basically any desire to read about it operation paperclip and then of course we know that the bunch of the those uh ukrainian ss uh servicemen from the remini air base uh you know have been sent to canada with their you know help from pope at that time so yeah what's the news bunch of the nazis have been resettled in the western world and hey just canada forgot a little bit you know they let their guard down and then what bang there you go suddenly it was exposed great you know great everybody now sees everything they need to see yes okay um this this question is uh from don harder he submits the following question he is a he is a u.s expat currently residing in russia mm -hmm. There is a large number of Russian slash Putin supporters inside Russia who criticize the Russian army and the Putin administration for going too slow. Likewise, there are those in the West with stature such as Paul Craig Roberts who echo this critique, arguing that it's causing the West to think Putin is indecisive. The risk, he argues, is that he keeps hope alive for the neocons who will use that to continue to ramp up the escalation and perhaps lead them to introducing tactical nukes um those are fantasies primarily and they derive from the fact that people obviously do not understand how military operates and how russian security council uh, operates and how they develop the strategy First, uh, Ukraine is just one link in the chain of Russia, uh, colossal, we're talking about historical terms, uh, basically standoff with NATO. Russia is not fighting Ukraine, Russia is fighting NATO. Nobody cares whatever neocons think. First, uh, Russia is not obliged and has no debt of anything to liberate combined West from the cabal of neocons and its West's and people of the West uh, task to free themselves from it. Russia is not going to liberate them. It's the uh, responsibility of people in the United States and Canada in Western Europe. If they fail at this task, well, too bad. But the point is, as I already stated, <clears throat> even from the purely military strategic point of view, uh, NATO is already exhausted. <clears throat> and we already see that very visible cracks. And again, <clears throat> uh, real wars, real wars are not fought for, you know, immediately capturing territory and then, you know, staking, you know, your flag in it and saying, hey, we won. No, it's about annihilation of the enemy. And guess what? Russia was doing a great job, in, uh, I mean, uh, accomplishing this. So, yeah, it's all uh, primarily people who have very little understanding of how military fights, especially modern wars, especially wars of the 21st century, and especially how the military industries of the West reacted, so to speak. Uh, they are incapable to sustain this conflict. This is precisely why Russia is doing the way it's doing. And plus, there is another uh, point which those people simply ignore. Russians still decide what to do with this ramp of Ukraine. 
Russia doesn't want those millions of the hostile population being the part of Russia. <clears throat> so, you know, that's the other issue. But it's uh, too long to explain it here, you know, in the short time. So, but this is just how it works. Okay. Um, I was trying to look up an article about uh, Seymour, uh, Seymour Hersh. Yeah. yeah, he just came out with a, a new article about about the the pipelines. And I was going to wanted to yeah. see what, what your thoughts were on that. He just came out with it this morning. I believe it was, it was on RT. Yeah. I mean, nothing new. They knew it. I mean, come on. I mean, even before Hirsch, uh, Sai Hirsch, great expo expose on that. And the fact that he basically accused the United States and, you know, uh, of that. Anybody, again, who have half brain knew what happened, you know. So it's just like, yeah, sure, that Sai Hirsch uh, piece uh, is important, not in the sense of what is in it, which is, of course, anybody knows. It's in the fact that he brought it up into the, the public light, so to speak, to discuss. But yeah, it was the United States, it was NATO, which was behind it. Uh, though lab dogs from Germany agreed upon it. So they decided to commit suicide. Good luck, you know. Who cares about Germany anymore, you know? So it's like, what can I say? And and I, I believe he also said the Swedes were involved or helped them out or something like that. No, possible. Why not? Uh, Swedes have the decent uh, submarine program. They have decent, uh, generally Swedish submarines of the Gotland class are great as a sky case. I mean, uh, submarines. And so they have the good tradition of the all those, you know, uh, underwater diversionary frogmen. And so, yeah, very well could be. It makes no difference at this stage. It doesn't matter who and how got involved. I mean, the signal was from Washington, D.C. So, I mean, it just, you know, again, we are playing here the games of the, you know, uh, forms how to present something in terms of being consumed by the general public so there you go okay um also the reports out of russia suggest that there may have been a german tank crew operating in ukraine do you believe there that do you believe there are nato personnel operating in a cqc close quarter combat yeah absolutely Again, as I said, I already commented on that. Yeah, it's a no well-known fact. People, okay. Russian people uh, at the front line and counterintelligence services, they know who those people are. They know their names. They know their ranks. They know their street addresses in the United States. And for, so it just, people should understand what is this all about. I mean, you cannot uh, really uh, pretend that you cannot be identified anymore. You can and they are. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is, can you shed some light on uh, the Russian in interrogated uh, intricate air defense system? What makes it so effective? Well, uh, what makes it so effective is what is called the school. Russians developed the school after the World War II without having, for example, uh, aircraft carriers, having, however, very impressive uh Air Force, but then again, once the uh, high altitude uh, American bombers and, of course, uh, carrier battle groups have been kind of, you know, uh, <clears throat> maneuvering around Russia, what are you going to do? How are you going to shoot down, for example, the, something like U-2 with uh, 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 pilot powers? You have to develop the high altitude missiles, and that's what Russians have been doing all along. And as a result, they developed uh, and ex expanded into this field so dramatically that <clears throat> now we're talking about air defense, not just some separate air defense complex, or let alone something about like Iraq. They pretend that they had the air defense, they really didn't. <clears throat> but we're talking about integrated, fully integrated air defense with the very uh, powerful computing capabilities and net centricity. So, and as a result, you have the outstanding air defense complexes. So, and don't forget that the air defense is not just the task of the ground crews of the, let's say, book or S-400 uh, missile systems. There are a bunch of the Russian uh, aviation, combat aviation, which uh, uh, conducts the air defense operations. 
So it's uh, it's a complex of things, and yeah, they just technologically Russians are extremely advanced in this respect, and it's way better than anything NATO can produce. So simple as that. So they're more advanced and more superior. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. It's just cold hard fact. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the G L O N S N A S adjustment on the S one thirty six drone and why the Russians' alternative to GPS makes the drone more difficult difficult to jam? Well, GLONASS, I mean, we're talking about GLONASS as global. It was second global uh, <clears throat> positioning system. Uh, actually, Russians have been in the uh, space-based navigation for a very long time, starting from the 60s, including the production of the, and putting in the, uh, in 19, uh, early 1970s, uh, the PARUS, uh, the uh, global positioning system, space-based. So Russians are not new to all that. So uh, obviously there are the ways to uh, protect your signal and make it more difficult to jam, for example. And GLONASS does this, you know. So and in terms of accuracy, it's comparable. Uh, in some cases, it's better than GPS. So Russians use GLONASS actually, but they can use it uh, intermittently GPS if they need to, for example. So, but you for the uh, there are cases when Russians use GPS, but uh, mo all uh, modern Russian weapon systems are guided, any any of them which are guided by their uh, uh, space-based navigational assets, they are guided by GLONASS. Hmm. <clears throat> why, why do you think it's so hard for the Western masses to accept that there, in fact, exists a far-right sector in Ukraine, a little Nazi regime? Why is this obvious fact always labeled as Russian propaganda? Yet we have so much evidence of Azov Battalion sporting Nazis emblems and flags on their NATO supply vehicles that the AFU ranks swamp with show soldiers who openly, openly display their Nazi tattoos and street names after Nazis collaborators all over Ukraine. No, very simple. Uh there is no free press, uh, corporate free press in the United States or in the West in general. They are merely the propaganda outlets of powers that be. Everybody knows that New York Times or Washington Post are not really newspapers. They are propaganda outlets. Uh, there are no normal, honorable people working in the general, in the Western corporate media. They are all prostitutes. I mean, literally and figuratively speaking. So they will do anything for their promotion and they will push any agenda. I mean, so they have, again, we're talking about people who have no uh, sense of right and wrong. And this is the extension, uh, like, as I already stated, CNN, Washington Post, you know, Politico, Bloomberg, they are all extension of their owners. And their owners are sitting, you know, some of them, like in, uh, I believe in New York Times is their uh, primarily the DNC, Democratic National Committee outlet. Washington Post is the CIA outlet. Those are propaganda. And they, of course they push uh, agenda. And if they push agenda, they will lie. So that is why they are blind to all that. But even they are beginning now to you know, notice things so to speak. As I already stated, uh, basically don't shake hands with any uh, corporate journalist in the United States. Take antibiotics after that. These are not people you want to deal with. They have no degree of honor, uh, integrity, or normal human qualities. They are prostitutes. They just do their job. And then when they say that Hitler was a nice humanitarian, they will say so. Absolutely. They will do so. <clears throat> Okay, after the Russian Federation achieve, uh, achieves victory, do you believe people in Reznikov, Mondoval, and Blintiski will be persecuted for their crimes? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the uh, uh, war crimes tribunal, real war crimes tribunal, is being uh, configured as we speak 
Russia's investigative committee is involved there. Most likely, most likely, I'm speculating, don't quote me on this, but it is clear that it will be in Moscow, it will be held in Moscow, and uh, most likely in Donetsk. And there will be people not only like that who will be persecuted, there will be many uh, uh, Western political leaders and media personalities who will be charged too. I can. I already have the pro, pretty much the list of the probable candidates for that. You know, so I mean, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. You know, um, I noticed uh, this weekend about you know about the standing ovation for the Nazi yeah. with, with either Friday or Saturday, and then um, but I don't see anybody talking about. I mean, I had Larry Johnson yesterday. And he's he made a little statement on it, but I'm just curious. Uh, what are your thoughts or your opinion of why do you think Zelensky appointed Marina uh, Abramovich to the as an ambassador to Ukraine for the, the children's program? I mean, they're Satanists. I mean, there, there are many people there which are <clears throat> bizarre and uh, she's Satanist. She's uh, so, yeah, hey, I mean, what's the difference? Look at the woke culture and cancel culture. War culture is basically driven by pretty much satanic ideas about humanity. So, I mean, nothing new. I mean, go uh, walk around uh, the uh, humanities, especially political science or journalist schools in the Ivy League. I mean, what's the difference? They're pretty much some of them. We don't even know what kind of practices they are involved with. You know, so you look at any so-called uh, representative of the, let's say, American or West European intellectual class. My gosh, pedophilia is rampant there. You know, so they are not normal people, as I already stated. We have the situation, which is the political class is imploding in the sense that it lost completely any guidance. It's very incompetent, but they are. So, yeah, Abramovich, sure, why not? Again, as I already stated, they will praise Hitler if they told to do so. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a couple questions from the from the subscribers and then we'll let you go because I know you're busy. Yeah. And we appreciate your time. And, sure. uh, and like I said, everything that how people can find you will be in the description box. So I'm going to do a couple questions real quick. Uh, I got to do this one for sure. This is my wife. My wife wants to know, how do you see this war affecting your economy where you live? And I believe you're in Seattle, right? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, there are. In terms of the affecting, for example, local economy of state of Washington, it has to be kept in mind that uh, economically it's doing more or less okay, more or less. Everything is the same. We have extremely high gasoline prices, by the way, uh, and there's a whole chain of events which precedes that. Uh, but uh, in terms of, don't forget, we still are to a degree, you know, aerospace hub of the United States with Boeing at all, and while Boeing struggles, there's still, there are still plenty of jobs. We have the social pro problems here. So, and, uh, uh, pardon me, what the heck? Uh, what the heck? I cannot no decline it. Okay. No, no problem. Pardon no me. Problem. So yeah, we <laughs> do not. Yeah, we have the issue so uh, of social nature, but even uh, the uber liberal, insane uh, Seattle, which essentially have been driven into the ground. Even yesterday, I believe they accepted the fact that they will not allow to do drugs openly on the streets, as it was the case before. Even those woke, uh, what is called lefty liberals, what have you, they do understand that at some point of time, if it discontinues, and Seattle has been turned into a dumpster, basically, it, it's going to get them, you know, not only in terms of the elections, but the crime rampant and things like that. So don't forget, this was the place where what was very hotbed for the BLM movement and defund the police, even three years ago. 
not the case anymore. Evidently, they begin to see the reality. So it's kind of complex issues, you know. So, um, but uh, so far, it is what it is here. I mean, uh, many people will lose, continue to lose jobs, and there will be jobs open, but there will not be enough qualified people and educated people to take them. So it's, it's a complex situation. Okay, the another question is, Andre, uh, thank you for everything you taught me through the writing books. When is the fourth one coming out? Yeah. And then also, since stealth, oh, I'll go ahead, answer that one. Oh, no, when I, I see that. I see the question. No, so yeah, I, I am not completing the book, the fourth one, until there is a, some military resolution because I will be expecting some post-battle uh, uh, data coming out, which I may employ in writing my book. I'm talking about the correlates of war. So, and uh, this is pro probably, I will finish it writing by the end of the year, start next year, and then we'll probably will start thinking how to publish it. So as for SU-57, SU-57 is still, uh, uh, again, stealth is not some magic wand. It's merely in, under some circumstances is the thing which reduces the, uh, the uh, distance of the detection of the aircraft uh, in the radio spectrum. And uh, so um, uh, SU-57 evidently is a tough nut to crack for uh, Ukrainian air defense or whatever is left of it. And of course, this is as much as I know, because obviously the issues of its uh, basically how it operates clandestine, uh, clandestine way, and it does operate. We know now that more than 20 of them are actually flying there. So who knows? <laughs> I mean, uh, Russians wouldn't use it if it would have, wouldn't have been useful. Okay. What is, what is more repulsive to the Russian people, Western continuous starting with DS or DS MSDP, yeah. or that for Nazis or the... Western culture. Both, they are interlocked, they are interconnected. Uh, as I already stated, the Satanism is the next way. Again, they are trying to uh, legitimize pedophilia. So we, we're looking at the complete uh, implosion of, it's not just morality. The, those people are, again, as I already stated, many of them, they have no concept of right and wrong. And they are narcissists and uh, psychopaths. So there you go. Okay, this will be the last question. And it's from my wife again. <laughs> Uh, do you, how do you feel this war is going to affect the election next year? You mean in the United States? Yes, in the United oh, States. Oh, yeah. DNC is desperate to provide some kind of the um, success, so to speak. And then they will have to provide some kind of the uh, redirection of the blame. Who will take the fall? I think so. Menendez and the charges against him is one of those kind of attempts to divert the attention from Biden administration of the bunch of those people who have no clue what they're dealing with. So that's what it is. Other than that, who knows? I mean, the United States is ungovernable for the last, uh, I would say, seven, eight years, basically. Okay. Well, Andre, we appreciate you. Um... Hope we can do this again next time. Hopefully, my host, will, my co-host, will be with me, so he can help me. <laughs> I appreciate you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.